Hey everyone, Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency, and in this video, I'm gonna show you three things that you can do to improve your tracking. Now, this is gonna work whether you are advertising on Facebook, Google, or TikTok, and uh, those three things consist of, one, making sure you're sending as much data as possible to those platforms. Uh, number two is actually make sure that your tracking code is actually loading on your website. And I'm gonna show you something that you can do to increase your chances of having your code uh, load versus not loading. And number three is to actually be able to track your users for a longer period of time. So we're gonna be talking about increasing the lifespan of your cookies. So if this sounds like fun, I'll get you to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But anyways, let's jump into this week's video. So let me just start by first saying that the best method right now of tracking users is if you're using both browser and service side tracking, especially for platforms like Facebook or TikTok. Now, if ever you just heard me saying both browser and service side tracking, you're like, Cedric, what the heck is that? Then maybe this video is actually a little bit too advanced for you because this videos are three things that you can do on top of having both browser and server side tracking. So if you're not familiar with what the Facebook conversion API is and how you can have your events being sent to, let's say, Facebook or TikTok from both browser and server, then you can have an event ID to duplicate these events and you don't have that kind of setup for your company, that's totally fine. But I would actually recommend that you watch one of my other videos where I go through the entire process because that's really the foundation. And I'll leave the link of the video in the description of this video. So go ahead and watch that if that's not your current setup. But if it is, and now you're looking for, you know, so for those extra things that you can do to improve your tracking, now this video is really for you. So let's actually start with number one, which is making sure that we're sending as much data as possible. So most platforms like Facebook will actually give you a long list of different parameters that you can send back in order to help them match the event that you're sending with an actual, let's say, Facebook profile. So what happened is whenever there's an event happening on a website, let's say a lead or a purchase, Facebook receives that event. And usually if ever you don't have what we call events matching, that's when you send uh, more information, then you, Facebook really only uses like their cookie and a few other things like the IP, what kind of device you're using to try to match that with an account that they have, right? So a Facebook profile. But you can actually increase the likelihood of Facebook matching that event with a Facebook profile by sending more information. For example, the user's first name, last name, email, phone number, and honestly, whatever else that you collected that Facebook might want. And the main reason why it's important to do that is because the more information you send, again, the more likely Facebook will be able to connect those. And when it connects that event with the Facebook profile, that's when you can report more conversions inside of your campaigns, which will help the Facebook AI to learn and optimize your ads. And also that it just increases everything, like your retargeting audiences and really all your audiences. So it's really also in your best interest to send as much data as possible to a platform like Facebook. Now I keep talking about Facebook because that's really the platform we do a lot of videos on and, and on this channel, but this is the same for TikTok. So TikTok, just like Facebook, like I have here, they have an article showing you exactly what are all the different parameters that you can send, like the email, first name, last name, and then you can just go ahead and send that. And then same thing with a platform like Google. So you can go and send personal information to Google with your events. And then the way I do that is I actually always just use a Google Tag Manager. So let's take actually take a, the lead event by example. So I'm opening this up. And again, if you have no clue what you're looking at here and then why, how did he get the Facebook template here? What, and you know, how do you set all this up? I've made a lot of other videos showing you exactly to do that. Again, this is more of an advanced topic so that you can potentially put a few other things on top of what you currently have to just improve your overall tracking. And I love doing those kind of things because this is something that doesn't require a lot of effort usually to do what I'm gonna be mentioning in this video versus like creating new uh, creatives or optimizing a landing page. That takes a lot of time and energy, but improving your tracking is just something that, you know, any businesses can simply do and it's only gonna help with your results. So I love doing things like that where it's like more technical, but then it helps with results. So when you're using this template, you're gonna be selecting this option right here. So enable advanced matching. And if you open this up, this is where you can add, let's say the uh, first name, you could add the last name, right? And you can just keep adding those parameters and then you can add the value. Now, if you're wondering, well, Cedric, how do I generate the value? Like, how do I get the user's first name? Like, I obviously can't just type like, like someone's name here. It needs to be a variable that just 
pulls in the first name or the email and whatever to submit the form. Well, if ever you don't have a current data layer installed on a website that's in charge of creating and pulling that information, let's say from a form, I would recommend that you watch one of my video that I'll either post on the screen here or it's gonna be a link in the description. And then this video is gonna show you exactly how you can use Google Tag Manager to create a data layer for your website. And that's gonna be important to send as much information as possible. But guys, that is number one. So making sure that you're going through whatever platform that you're gonna be advertising on. So let's say Facebook and read all this and see what can I send. Obviously you don't wanna ask your users too many questions like you don't wanna ask their gender on uh, a regular form if they you know they want to get in contact with you let's say to get a quote on something that would not really that'd be a bit too much information to ask but definitely you're probably asking for the first name last name email phone number so those are for sure fields that you should be sending to let's say facebook but again research your platform that you're you're advertising on let's say it's tiktok tiktok has an article just like this telling you exactly what you can send them do that research and then just go ahead and uh, send that to the proper platform. So let's talk about number two now, which is making sure you can track as many users as possible that come to your website. So let's actually put ourselves in the shoes of an ad blocker, because that's usually what will block your Google Tag Manager or your Facebook Pixel to load. Their goal really is to block you sending data to a platform like Facebook or you know to block those sorts of uh, traffic activities. So what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be looking and seeing, okay, well, is Facebook loading on your website? And they actually have a list of all the different domains that are involved in tracking people. So we have uh, Facebook, we have TikTok, we have Google Analytics, right? So there's a really long list. And what they'll see is like, hey, is this domain, which let's say Facebook, is it trying to access information or do we have something that is trying to send data to the source that is Facebook? And then when an ad blocker or something that is again responsible for uh, blocking tracking looks at this, they're saying, huh, yeah, that's actually what they're doing. So what they do is they actually block that script from loading on the page. And then when that happens, well, that's actually when, again, a platform like Facebook or even Google Analytics 4 will not be receiving your data. But there's a few solutions to that. And then the first one is to actually, like I said, not only do browser side tracking, but also server side tracking. So with server side tracking, what I actually recommend people when they're doing the whole setup is when you're sending data from server to server, so one server would be your server to Facebook server, you wanna use your own custom subdomain as a way to collect and transport data. So now when, and I know that's when it's a bit technical, but now whatever the ad blocker, let's say sees that there's a domain that is trying to do things with the user's information, then, then they look at it and they're like, oh, well, that's the domain of the website that the user is on. So that's first party tracking, that's fine. So when that happens, then usually a lot of ad blockers will kind of like let that slide because they don't know what it is about. They don't know if that's actually potentially to send the data to uh, your CRM so that you can actually get in touch with the user because maybe they submitted a form, right? So they don't fully know where that where that request, that request is being sent because it's being sent to your own server, right? It's your because you're creating your custom subdomain and it's tracking in a first party context. So when that happens, again, an ad blocker will probably not be able to pick that up. But then what's the issue that with that is that a lot of people's server site tracking kind of depends on Google Tag Manager to load on the website in the first place. So what I'm gonna show you now is how you can use your Stape account, which I'm gonna show you how it all works, to proxy Google Tag Manager. So instead of loading Google Tag Manager from Google server, I'm gonna show you how you can use your own custom subdomain and then load Google Tag Manager using your own custom subdomain. So again, that's gonna allow you to track as much users as possible. So I'm gonna now go inside my Stape account and let me just go over my dashboard so you can kind of get an idea of the view and what it looks like. So Stape is a service that I use to also do server-side tracking. So that's really what they do. So they offer a server so that you can send data to things like the Facebook conversion API, GA4, or wherever really you need to send it. And the reason I like Stape is first of all, it's a lot less expensive than having a Google server. And if you've watched my other video showing you how to do the Facebook conversion API and just Facebook tracking, I really, really recommend Stape because it, honestly, it's, it's a lot less expensive than using a Google server, but they also offer a lot of different templates that you can use 
to kind of build up different tracking requests like uh, sending data to Facebook or GA4 when Google doesn't really provide any of that and also they have really good support. And if you don't have a SIP account yet, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and what that's gonna do is we're gonna get a small commission, but you can also use the coupon code and I'll put it on the screen here to get, I believe it's 10% uh, off your plan. So, you know, it's just something to help with the channel and it also helps me out as well. But um, this is something that you're gonna need to proxy Google Tag Manager and to also do step three. So let me actually go into my container. And again, if you have no clue how to use this, I've made another video showing you how to kind of navigate the platform. But you're gonna go here and you click on power ups and you see where it says custom loader. That's what you're gonna to wanna to click on. So mine is already configured. So this is the domain that I've set up and it's a subdomain. And whenever there's, let's say an ad locker that looks and see, huh, what is a source domain trying to request and send data? they're gonna see ss.vertexdata.io and let's say my main domain that the user is on like that, the website is vertexdata.io, ss.vertex.io, makes sense, right? It makes sense that this subdomain is trying to uh, send data somewhere else, so it's trying to retrieve data, right? But if it's trying to send data to to the Facebook domain, and that's when again, an ad blocker will say, huh, huh, no, I know what you're trying to do here. You're trying to send the user data to Facebook, so that's when they're gonna block it. So now I would select my subdomain here, which again, I've already configured. And then that's my demo web GTM. And here you can select your platform. So if you're on WordPress, then you can select a WordPress platform. If you're on Shopify, you can select the Shopify platform. And then there's usually an app that you can download and add and um, it's actually gonna take care of proxy and GTM. So from here, I don't believe there's anything else that you would need to do inside the safe account. You can kind of just do it inside Shopify, WordPress. Uh, but just so you can kind of see what happens, I'm gonna hit other here, and then I'm gonna use a cookie, and I'm just gonna name this test, and I'm gonna hit on generate web GTM container. And you can see it's gonna generate a code here. And what I want you to take a look at is this right here. So that is actually the source and we can see that it's loading this from my subdomain. And now when we look at this, let me just screw it up. That is the original Google Tag Manager code that Google wants you to add to the website. So we can see that the original Google Tag actually is loading the library on Google server. But when we look at this right here, it's actually loading it on my subdomain. If you're wondering why does this say load here, um, that's because I've actually also installed the CNAME. So if I go to my settings and then I enable this, uh, sorry, not the CNAME, it's when I enable the global uh, CDN, then it also gives me a C name that I need to add to the website. And that's why it's not just ss.vertexdata.io, it's load.ss.vertexdata.io. So just one thing I wanna clarify. But if I go back to my power ups, click on custom loader, and again, I'm gonna generate that code again. That's a new code that I would wanna go on my website, remove the previous one that you've probably already added, so the basic GTM code, and replace both the code in the head section and in the opening body tag with this one, right? So you would wanna go and add your own code, but then this is how you can proxy Google Tag Manager. So basically what we're doing here is we're removing all traces of Google Tag Manager, so whenever all your scripts load on your website, if I'm an ad blocker looking at this, I'll be like, hmm, I don't see Google Tag Manager here because again, just like what an ad blocker or something that wants a black tracking will do is they have a list of all the different companies that track users. And unfortunately, sometimes Google Tag Manager falls into that bucket, but Google Tag Manager in my opinion can be used to to do other things than just tracking, but unfortunately it sometimes falls into the bucket of script that gets blocked by, let's say an ad blocker. So again, by changing your script here, it does help improve the amount of users that you can actually track on your website. So that's number two, and this by changing that GTM code, you're gonna be able to have your GTM script load on the majority of uh, page visits versus that if it was just a standard, and again, if it's standard, then there, you run into the possibility of uh, uh, being blocked. And even with this, there's still some ad blockers, some some really good ad blockers that will still block that code, but you know, it gives you a boost, let me put it this way. Okay, so let's actually talk about number three now, which is making sure that you are actually able to track your users for a longer period of time. 
aka increasing the lifespan of your cookies. So there's something happening right now where Safari will actually shorten the lifespan of your cookies. And um, that's, that's really bad because platforms like Facebook use cookies to do the attribution. So if let's say Safari or uh, even an ad blocker removes the cookies, well, that's just gonna make it harder for Facebook to track users and be able to attribute some of the sales and leads to your campaigns. So one thing that the state does is if you go to power ups, you can see here there's a cookie keeper and if I click on configure, right now this is what it looks like, but they're making a lot of changes so it's possible that it, it looks a little bit different when you're watching this video. But what I'm gonna recommend that you do is that you just go here and select the option extend, 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 extend. And again, it's something super simple that you can do. It's gonna take you 10 seconds. You're just gonna extend that. And what that's gonna do is actually gonna extend the lifespan of those cookies, um, which again, is only gonna help your tracking. But that is really it guys. So you, we can click extend and then you can just save the changes. Um, custom cookies, that's something if you're more of an advanced plan, but for a lot of users, you're probably just on one of the pro plans. So you can just go and extend all these different cookies. And again, those are things that you can do that in my opinion, doesn't take a lot of time or effort and it's gonna help and improve your tracking. And the better your tracking is, the better the results will be because you're really working with Facebook or you're working with TikTok and sending them as much information as possible, having GTM and your events being loaded on almost every page views, and then also increasing the lifespan of good cookies so that they can do proper attribution and reporting their platform. Again, I feel like when you do these type of things, you're really just helping them out. And then in the back end, they will also help you out in return because you know, it's at the end of the day, it's a, it's a relationship that you have with Facebook, I guess. That is really it for this video. If you've learned something new or if at least this is a good refresher, please uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you'd like me to make more videos on this subject. I really love tracking. I love analytics. Just let me know what you want to learn in the comment section and I'll definitely make a video about that. But guys, that is it for this video. Bye for now.